two truths and a lie. This is Industry Focus. Hey everyone, welcome to Industry Focus Healthcare Edition. I'm your host, Christine Hargis. I've got Todd Campbell, Motley Fool Healthcare contributor on Skype. It is December 30th, 2015, meaning it's the last episode of the year. Todd, do you have any fun New Year's Eve plans? Oh, we always try and do something that's fun. I mean, it'll be interesting because we actually have snow for the very first time up in New Hampshire. Uh, as of right now, we're getting our first snowstorm, which is pretty amazing. I don't know if it's snowed down there yet. Christine. I'm actually a little bit jealous. We had a rainy holiday. <laughs> oh, nothing worse. Well, so to celebrate the end of the year, snowy or not, uh, we figured we would throw out some excellent trivia for your New Year's Eve parties, and we want to play a game. So the game is called Two Truths and a Lie. And basically how it works is one of us will state three statements or somethings, and two of them are going to be true. One of them is going to be a lie, and the other person has to guess which one is the lie. So Todd and I usually have a conversation before we record these shows just to make sure we're on the same page, figure out what we're going to talk about. But with this one, we kind of didn't do that because we wanted to have the game be pretty genuine and not know which one the truth is and which one the lie is. So we have no idea what the other one has planned, and it should be fun. So I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, my first category that I had prepared for you is weird side effects of medicines. So here we go. Here's your three. Is it? Experiencing synesthesia, which is the experience of having one sense activated, such as smell, due to stimulation of another sense, like hearing. Is it losing your fingerprint, or is it becoming a compulsive gambler? <laughs> okay, great. And um, all right, so if, do you want me to pick which one I think is true? Yeah, and of course, because you know there's side effects of medicines, it's not like you're going to have this happen. It's just it's well documented that this could happen. All right, all right. I, I'm going to say that the, the, the number two and number three are pretty outlandish, uh, which probably could, could mean that they're true. But I'll go, I'll go with number one as being the true and, and the other two being false. We need one lie and two truths. Oh, one lie. Which okay. one is it? <laughs> yeah, so I'll go with the, the compulsive gambler is the is I'm going to go with the second one is the lie. The fingerprint. The fingerprint. So it's actually the first one. Oh! <laughs> and you know, it is totally possible that this is a side effect out there somewhere. I could not find any evidence of that being a side effect of any medicine. I found plenty of hallucinogenic drug drugs, like illicit drugs. But as far as I know, that's not a real side effect of a medicine. However, losing your fingerprint can be caused by a cancer drug called Zelota. And the compulsive gambling can be a side effect of Mira pecs, which is for Parkinson's and restless leg syndrome. Wow. Okay, great. That was fun. Okay. Yeah, who knew? So speaking of tripping over drug names all the time, um, that's actually the second category that I had. So I'll dive right into that one. Uh, weird drug names. So these are all three going to be branded drug names, meaning not the pre-approval scientific name a drug gets while it's still in development. So which one of these three do you think is made up? Is it? I feel like I should spell them, too. I'll, I'll say them, and then I'll spell them. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is going to be rough. Uh, is it Celecoxib, C-E-L-E-C-O-X-I-B, Celecoxib? Or is it Darmorixa, D-A-R-M-U-R-I-X-A, Darmorixa? I feel like I'm in a spelling bee. <laughs> or is it Metaxalone? M E T A X A L O N E, Metaxalone. Wow. I feel like I'm watching Transformers or, or my kids have Power Rangers on in the background. Or we're like uh, casting spells like in Harry Potter. Yeah, they all sound like spells from Harry Potter. I'm going to say that all three, no, I have to pick one that's a lie. Yep. So I'm going to say, what was the third one again? It was Metaxalone. We'll go with Metaxalone as being the lie. So the one that I made up was actually number two, Darmerxica. Dar Darmerxica. I should be able to say that one. I made it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you but... can't say it wrong. <laughs> yeah, really. I can say it however I want to say it. So the first one um, is an anti-inflammatory that was celecoxib. And then Metaxalone is a muscle relaxant. 
Um, fun fact about these crazy drug names. When I was doing my research for this, I literally just Googled, like, what are some crazy drug names? And I found articles explaining why drugs have crazy names. Todd, do you have any idea what, like, what the reasoning is behind that? Oh, the only thing I could think of is that um, it's to make sure that there's no um, risk of having an overlapping name or confusion. Yeah, that's uh, totally what it comes from. Interesting. Yeah, because the, so there was an arthritis drug called Celebrex and an antidepressant called Celexa. And apparently people were getting confused. And the big problem is if a pharmacist is reading a prescription and, you know, doctors sometimes will just like scribble it down. And if your pharmacist reads the wrong thing and they give you, you know, an antidepressant when you're supposed to have an arthritis medication, like that's really not good. So the FDA has started to get a lot more, a lot stricter about having these super unique names, not just a little bit unique, but it needs to be markedly different than anything else out there. Apparently, they actually reject four out of 10 proposed drug names. Wow, you know, that's an interesting stat right there. Yeah, it's going to be really hard on us as we do future shows because eventually these, these you know, names are going to be 10 letters long. Yeah, more and more syllables. And as it is, we're seeing all these like H's and J's and X's and names. Oh, hilarious. So what do you have for me? All right, well, I, I did mine a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to give you three statements or things and what I'd like you to do is tell me which one you think is the lie. Okay, so we're gonna just overall do it. Okay. okay? So I'm gonna start with the first one is that Bill Gates is investing millions of dollars to study a bacteria's immune system so that um, we can use what we learn to better treat diseases in humans. So first off is Gates spending millions of dollars on bacteria research, so that's one. The second one is going to be um, whether or not um, um, uh, uh, people who are traveling more than five time zones are going to have a new weapon in their arsenal to battle jet lag. Ongoing phase three trials are currently reviewing the drug, and that drug could come to market as soon as 2018. And then the final one, and one of these is one of these isn't true. The final one is that Pharma Bro Martin Shkreli is back in the news, fresh after posting five million dollars in bail. He went back on the Twitter sphere and he said he's ready to become CEO again of another company as long as one requirement is met that he can do all the live streaming and tweeting he wants. <laughs> Those are amazing. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think with the second one, you had so many details in there that I am inclined to believe that. And maybe this is just you being very smart and knowing that that's what makes it so convincing. I also believe the first one. So I'm going to go with the Shkreli one is the lie. And you got it. Yes, nice. <laughs> You know, I thought maybe by tripping over that second one a little bit, you'd be like, hmm, he's, he's going on the fly. Maybe that one's not true. Um, but, you know, sure enough, you, you ferreted it out. So the you first... really were calculated. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was trying to throw a curveball to you, but you, you caught it. You know, um, I, I have to say the people around this office do a really good job of keeping me up to date on everything that that guy does and says just because it's such a wild story. And you know, everybody knows that I'm super into the healthcare space and so they're like, oh my gosh, did you see the latest? So I would have been surprised if that had happened and somebody hadn't told me about it. Oh yeah, I mean, there were a lot of different things that we could have done for this episode, but I thought those th those were three that, that I thought were pretty intriguing because they all seem so outlandish. You know, the whole concept, uh, you know, basically what we, to, to go through these, Bill Gates uh, was is an investor in a company called Editus, and Editus is... Uh, researching what could very well be a, a fascinating story in 2017, uh, so uh, about two years from now. Uh, what they're doing is they've discovered that bacteria can fight off um, invaders or viruses by using a gene editing technique where they take some of the, the virus's DNA and save it for a later date. And then if they see it again, they send out um, uh, some RNA with some scissors, if you will, that go out and cut into that gene and, and keep it from replicating. So keep the virus from replicating. And, you know, the theory is that, wow, if we can take that 
um, immune system defense that bacteria uses and apply it in humans that maybe we can do everything from battle rare genetic disease to um, better target and destroy cancer. So that technology, which is known as CRISPR, is being worked on by a number of companies, including this one that Gates is an investor in. And I think it's a, a pretty crazy and, and uh, potentially exciting uh, piece of news. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Is it a publicly traded company? No, not yet. Um, you know, there, there it was venture capital funded. Um, Gates came in, I think it was back in August or so, as part of a $120 million capital raise. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though, that if, you know, this company, and there's not, there's two others, too. CRISPR is one of them, um, named after, of course, CRISPR, the, the technology. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if any of the, if these don't come public in the next year or two, because it really is a unique um a unique approach. So investors should 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 bear this in mind because it could be as enticing, if you will, uh, to investors as CAR T was uh, in 2015, which of course is a, a new way of attacking cancer as well. Very interesting. Tell me a yeah. little bit more about the uh, the jet lag pill. Yeah, you know, and this is an interesting one too because I found I was like, you know, really a, a drug for jet lag. I mean, you know, there's really something that you can do to so that you feel like you're actually on the right sleep schedule. That, that seems weird to me, um, but sure enough, there's there's a company out there called Vanda Pharmaceutical, and they have a drug on the market already that's being used to help people who are blind adjust their sleep cycles to, uh, to the 24 hour sleep cycle. You know, they, if you're blind and, and you're blind to the point where you can't um, sense any light, uh, you have a very hard time obviously figuring out when you should be sleeping and when you should be awake. So they just uh, developed a drug called Hetlewise, uh, probably pronounced that completely wrong, um, that uh, helps to target that. And one of the things they discovered is that, hey, you know, if we use this in people who, you know, got jet lag, it helps them more quickly get on the right time zone too. So, you know, they've done a couple smaller studies. They're going to do one um, confirmatory study, a phase three study that should begin soon. Uh, and they think they could have results from that study as early as 2017. So if so, that means that people who are world travelers may have a new option, you know, maybe as early as 2018. Wow. That's crazy. Label expansion for you. Yeah. I, I, I have to wonder how exactly that works. I mean, how do they know just how jet lagged you are? Because you don't want to overcompensate, you know? I know, I know. And I'm sure that, you know, they're going to be, they, obviously, they're spending all sorts of time, research and energy on it. They think that this could be a huge product for them. Because, you know, according to the company, Vanda Pharmaceutical, 100 million people a year are traveling more than five time zones. So you figure even if a small percentage of those people, um, you know, can, can benefit from this drug, then that could make you know, this is a very strong seller. So yeah. from an investor's perspective, you might want to keep an eye on you know, the pharmaceuticals. Yeah, I can't uh, imagine that the drug would... drug is risky, but, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine that the drug's going to end up being terribly expensive, but with a population that big, it's like, okay, well, that could add up. That's so interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, for the third one, you know, I, I could have said anything. I, I even toyed with the idea that maybe he was going to start a new limited partnership and name it Farmer Bro uh, <laughs> LP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which may or you may or may not have uh, bought into that one as well. I, I think we're just giving him ideas here. I hope he's listening. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you know, it's 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 an interesting story, as you mentioned. I mean, it's it's important to follow because there are a lot of different moving pieces to it. I, you know, for if it, if any of our listeners aren't familiar with the story, um, Martin Shkreli is a CEO of a company called Turing Pharmaceuticals that got a lot of attention over the summer and into the fall for buying a drug called Daraprim that's used for parasitic infection uh, and then jacking up the price by 5,000%. And of course, he's um, since been booted. Yeah, he's since been booted. Um, he, he has been arrested uh, on other charges stemming from a prior role he had as CFO, CEO of uh, Retrofin, um, in which there are all sorts of allegations going around about the use of, of company money for personal use, blah, blah, blah. He obviously says that those uh, are false accusations. And of course, there will be a day in court. But he's very well known, obviously, for uh, being an active tweeter and an active live streamer. So no matter what he's doing, I'm sure that everybody in America will soon know. Yeah, he is entertaining for sure. Absolutely. Well, nice work, Todd. Those were really fun. <laughs> yeah, that was a great episode. Hopefully we can do more of those for our listeners. If anyone wants to send a 
a tr- two truths and a lie to Todd and me. I promise we won't cheat. You can always email us at industryfocus at fool.com. Uh, as always, I'll remind you that people on the program could have interest in the stocks that we talk about. The Motley Fool could have formal recommendations for or against them. Don't buy or sell based solely on what you hear. And so that's our last episode of the year. Happy New Year, everyone. We'll talk to you next year.